it just was the natural progression. You know, I felt like we were seniors back in the day and then we graduated, you know what I mean? And it'd be weird to go back to your high school and just like walk around and be like, Hey, what's up guys. You know what I mean? Remember, you know, I used to run this, I used to run this school, man. Hey, it's nothing nowhere. And this is enemies, friends like these. Hey, it's Gucci high waters. Uh, this is enemy friends like these. We've kind of known each other for years because one of my best friends is also one of your best friends, JV. That's kind of what like really started the collaboration, but it was like long awaited, you know, for years, like we would, you know, link up at shows or whatever. I've always wanted to collaborate with Joe. So it finally happened and it was definitely through yeah. friends, um, which is. Yeah, cool. dude. Yeah. We, we've known each other for a minute like for a while and just like yeah we inevitably uh met each other just because of like soundcloud and and whatever and yeah we've been friends for a while it's, i'm surprised we didn't collab earlier but it's just like glad glad yeah. that we did it, it's never like forced or anything you know once you're you're kind of friends with with each other and and stuff it's like there's no rush you know there's no rush on collabing with anything just like let it let it come about and that's really like how it happened which is the best way you know yeah it's e it's just fun and just easy to make music with your friends as opposed to like someone random that's like a cool feature yeah 100 percent. the meaning behind rock bottom is kind of i i wanted to approach it like with a simple concept because to me like this song is like way more energetic than you know my other stuff so my idea was like all right instead of kind of jumping into a really like deep personal type of like story or whatever uh i'm gonna make it like way more general but not to like dull down the you know emotions of the song or anything i just wanted to kind of broaden it because i feel like more people would kind of relate to something that's uh more broad but it's still like a very relatable concept it's basically just um i feel like we've all been here like rock bottom you know nothing matters uh, you're in a toxic relationship or whatever and there's just kind of there's no hope or anything but for some reason you're just still sticking together and no matter what happens between you and this other person in the relationship you're just gonna stick it out because it can't get any worse than than rock bottom that's pretty much the general concept of it I remember you sent me the the track and I was like yep I've been there and like I don't, every, everyone's been there. I feel like, honestly, it's just kind of like a rite of passage, just like something that happens like growing up and navigating relationships and stuff. And yeah, I, I thought it was rad and it was very Gucci high waters, very nothing nowhere. And the, the beat was crazy. Everything was crazy about it. So I was like, yeah, that's a, that's a no brainer. Yeah, for sure. I think it was just the perfect one to get you on because getting you on a song, it, it has to be like, all there it has to be like a banger so um i definitely waited to kind of get a really good one and then hit you up so it's it was a, awesome it's a banger it's a banger alert so joe you're releasing an album tell us a little bit about it trauma factory let's hear it man yeah yeah uh trauma factory is kind of like a synonym for human life you know um there's good and there's bad in life but inevitably there will be suffering people will encounter different traumas um and that could be bleak or it could be like viewed as, as something positive you know everybody suffers therefore everybody um can be compassionate towards one another um pretty much has been an album that's been two years in the making you know how it used to be with soundcloud where like you would just drop a song the same day you made it so like yeah. it, was, it is funny like just like absolutely taking your time I know you did the same thing for jokes on you like you definitely took your time and it's like there's that part of you that wants to release it but at the same time like you know you could tell like when you wait on a song and you really work on it for a while it's like it's worth it but yeah trauma factory is all over the place it's got new metal post-hardcore r&b straight up rap like everything just just a wild wild ride yeah no i love the i love the title and the kind of the message behind it i've kind of been thinking about stuff like that too like 
you go through life like I'm 22 but feels like I've been through so much like like you said childhood stuff and just growing up you know going through life it's like you definitely experience trauma and it makes you like who you are and suffering definitely makes you just a way stronger person so it's like I feel like a lot of people will look at it and be like yo this is like obviously like sad like trauma factory like it sounds like you know dark but to me like that's like I don't know. It's like self-aware and like acceptance, which is like super sick. Yeah. And the the features are just friends. Like, you know, what's funny is I feel like me and you do the same thing. <laughs> we just like work with friends and that's it. Yeah, definitely. We kind of came up the same way, just SoundCloud and like music is fun to us. And like, we just got big and then we didn't change, you know, we still have friends in music that we really love and it doesn't matter you know, if they have numbers or whatever, it's just like, we're still gonna, no matter what happens, we're still gonna be the same person making the same stuff, like just enjoying music for what it is. Yeah, dude, that's the wave. Gucci, my guy, my dude. How's the response to uh, Jokes on You been? It's been, uh, it's been really good. It's way more, like way more, I guess I could say like active uh, response than I really thought because uh, for so long I was just dropping singles and just kind of like slacking off a bit, like working on music, but not really releasing much or not being on social media and stuff like that. So I kind of had this expectation where I'm like, all right, I haven't been really active for a year. So like, how good can this album do? You know, like I kind of, shot myself in the foot in that way but it was just all in my head like I obviously still had like uh the fans and they were waiting for like a big project so it totally like blew my mind when all the DSPs were like showing support too like got a bunch of Spotify playlists and like you got a the billboard Spotify Times billboard Square. in Times Square <laughs> which is like super crazy like I didn't ever think not that I don't like undermine myself but I, I always think realistic, like the odds of getting like a Spotify billboard in Times Square, just like, to me, that's like very lucky and I feel blessed, but it's been great. And like, people are loving the album. I think like the one thing that really means a lot to me is people are, are saying like, the sound is just like progressed so much, you know, from my early stuff, they're just like, yo, you've gotten like so much better. And that's really what it's about to me. Like, it's just yeah. about progression and like learning new things, you know, getting better i feel like if you're just at the same spot making the same stuff that's cool you know but to me i i love growing i love getting better at things you know writing music lyrics stuff like that joe i know your album's coming out but are you working on any other things like writing for people or producing for anyone else or is it just album mode right now yeah, well, yeah, you know how it is with the album, like promotion. Like, I feel like the al- the album's the easy part, and then the promotion's the hard part. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like, I- I'm I'm not really doing too much nothing nowhere stuff. I'm I'm doing some features for some people that'll probably come to light um, soon. I'm doing uh, a lot of writing for other people, a lot of uh, like top line and just like songwriting for different artists, and that keeps me busy you know, just finishing an album, it's good to take a little break. Cause like, you don't yeah. want to get burnt out and like, you know, I'll take my guitar and just play and like, try and try and do, uh, you know, just play some riffs and, and stay creative. But at the same time, like, you know, I feel like you and I have been playing our fair share of call of duty together. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a little insider info. We both finished <laughs> our album, so we don't really make music right now. We kind of just play call of duty and, and we, we'd like try hard at that. Like, if there's yeah. any passion, it's it's all there. It's all in Call of Duty right now. Yeah, but, we're passionate. Um, it's definitely good, like to take a break though. Hundred percent. Like, I don't know. Once you once you squeeze all your thoughts and and energy into an album, like you're you're just drained and you need to recharge. You know, you need some life experience. And I think I definitely um, enjoy taking time off. Maybe a little too much. It's it's hard to get back into it, but. Um, I'm excited to like kind of get back into it. I'm like redoing my studio and stuff. So it's going to be like breath of fresh air. 
dude that's so rad yeah yeah it's you, you need you need the 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 inspiration and the experience to write like once you do an album like you've just taken all your experiences and put it into it so you gotta wait a little bit you know yeah 100 percent. you know you gotta you gotta win some call of duty games kind yeah, of bring they, that passion yeah. back into your heart yeah you gotta you gotta write songs about that loss you know that call of duty loss. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to be working on some new stuff in the future. You know, it's just like, it's inevitable because, you know, we're always hanging out, you know, in calls and stuff all the time and texting and it's just fun to make music with your friends. So like, why wouldn't you, you know? Right. Yeah. hundred percent. I think that's, and that's the cool thing about it too. It's like, there's nothing in plan right now, but you know, we both know that at some point we'll probably work on something together if it's, something to do with production or writing or like feature, like it doesn't matter. Like we, we talk like almost every day uh, with all of our friends and it's just kind of like a solid squad. And like some of the people don't even make music, but it's, it's less about the music, more about like just having fun with your friends. And yeah, I think definitely like in the future, we'll have some stuff for sure. All right. So, favorite uh, Nothing Nowhere song? I've been a fan for many years, and I'm sure most of my fans know that, too. You know, uh, NN is kind of like a legend, you know? <laughs> uh, but, so it's, it's a weird question because uh, the, this, my favorite song right now probably is one off your upcoming album, which obviously I can't talk about, but... Um, when it comes out, I'll let you guys know. It's kind of like a secret, but um, <laughs> my favorite track is definitely one on the upcoming album. Just stay tuned for Nothing Nowhere, Trauma Factory. Yeah, I I say uh, in terms of like my favorite song of yours, I well, I guess the song that I'm listening to the most, you know, it's weird, which doesn't usually happen mm-hmm. when the first the first song of an album is the one that you're looping the most. And that's that's tragedy. And uh, yeah. I remember the first time I listened <clears throat> through to the album, I played Tragedy and I was like, yo, this is crazy. And I just played that like five times before I even made it down the rest of it. And it's just such yeah. a good, it's such a good like way to set the stage uh, for the album. I mean, obviously like I'm so sick of this, you know, I've, I've listened to that many, many times. And <laughs> you're quite literally sick of the sick of this and sick of that song. <laughs> that's like me with yeah. hammer um yeah yeah dude I, i've been listening for a while too so it, it's oh yeah it's just a trip we're we're linking and building this is kind of funny because i remember mine but what was your uh what was your first show ever like it probably isn't as interesting as your story because i know you started music uh at a much younger age but um i was like 19 probably so literally like three years ago, my first show was, and it was just like one of my best friends, uh, girlfriend's like birthday party. And she's like, she's a creative, like she makes clothes and stuff. So um, she like rented out this warehouse in Brooklyn and she had a bunch of her friends that own brands, like have like these pop-up shops and like just little stands, sell their clothes. She had a bunch of people come through and like paint art. And my friend was like, yo, like you should perform at this. Like, it's really cool. It's just going to be a bunch of creative people like making stuff. And I was like, I was like, no, like, I'm so scared of performing. Like, there's no way I'll do this. And my girlfriend was like, come on, like, do it. Like, are you ever going to like get on stage? Like, you can't like procrastinate it that long. Like, just do it. It doesn't matter. And like, I I owe it to her because I wouldn't have done it, you know, um, if she didn't say that she just put that perspective uh into my head and it was cool man there was like 15 people there like something happened with the the speakers they had like real like you know concert speakers like big whatever you call them i don't know what you call them PAs. um yeah 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 um they had pas but like the pas broke like the night before i don't know <laughs> they said like people were playing and like they broke them we were like, all right, we can't perform tonight. And it was like two hours till like the performance starts. And I had my friend uh, from where I live right now, Long Beach. I had him 
get my speakers from my studio and bring them to the venue. Yo. And we performed with studio speakers, like speakers this big. <laughs> it was like, it was like the most quiet show ever, bro. Um, and we just had it like going into a little interface and like we had a little laptop. It was just like classic first show, like absolute shit show. Um, but it was fun, man. It was just like, I, I got the nerves out of me. I was completely fucking nervous, but that made me realize, okay, I can, I can do this. And then it's been a wrap since then. Yeah. It's the, the first show is always going to be a mess. Like, yeah, uh, dude, that is so funny. Uh, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I guess my, my, my first show ever, I mean, does the fifth grade talent show count? <laughs> because we can go that <laughs> far back. I remember I played, uh, I played uh, Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix at the fifth grade talent show. My, we are, the name of our band was uh, Red Cloud, I think. Yeah, That's really sick. sick name. It sounds like a 12 year old made it. And, um, and then, you know, gr- growing up, uh, we used to rent out like local, like VFW, like little like halls and just like put flyers up around my little like town, be like, yo, we're, we're playing a show. And, you know, like, you know, 20 kids would show up and we, you know, we would just play our songs or whatever. But, um, in terms of my first like real, real show, um, as nothing nowhere, uh, it was actually, uh, opening up for Puya and Suicide Boys. Oh my God, man. I don't know. It was, you know, that I was just terrified. It was at the Worcester Palladium in Massachusetts. So scared. I mean, so, so scared. Um, but you know, we, uh, showed up and we were like the second ones on after like this, there was like some local act and they were like some like weed rap group and they were like throwing like, you know, like blunt papers and and like uh, rolling papers into the crowd. And like, it like, it was so weird. And then I come out with my guitar and my sads, like everyone's already turned up and everything. I come out, you know, they're ready to see suicide boys and stuff. I come out with my guitar and, you know, and I start playing my super sad songs and like, uh, (laughs) you know, and there's just no response. You know what I mean? Like there yeah. is, no, there is nothing. And, uh, you know, uh, my, you know, my homie who, who really helped me out, Mikey, the magician from, uh, the buffet boys, uh, Puya's crew, you know, he came out and he was like, yo, let's go. Like hyping me up while I have like my guitar <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> like, I'm sad. I'm yeah. Sad. Yeah. And there was, Dude, this one, so good. there was this one super like drunk girl, uh, in the front row, and she was just like, "We want poo, yeah!" And I just have my guitar, and I'm just like, "Sad song, sad song." And she's just like, "No, we want poo, yeah!" And I'm just like, "Oh man, dude, is this what playing shows is like?" And you know, you you gotta like, <laughs> dude, that's gotta go amazing. through those. And there was a lot more of those. And oh no, my cats, stop! Um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot more of those, and you gotta like. You know, you got to get through those. I've been pretty disconnected from the SoundCloud world for like almost two years now. I don't know what it was. I think I just kind of, if the scenes like cycle so much and you kind of just go with the scene you're with, if that makes sense. Like my songs don't even really get like that much traction on SoundCloud anymore. And that was like the sign to me that like, all right, like I'm not even a part of this world anymore in a weird way. So naturally I just, I never go on SoundCloud and I don't really know many people. I know a couple of hyper pop kids like um, Glaive and Eric Doa. I think they're both really sick. Those are probably my picks just because like the lack of knowledge of like the SoundCloud uh, scene right now. Yeah. I mean, I haven't logged into my SoundCloud in like years <laughs> yeah uh like yeah like uh my, my like songs just get auto uploaded on there but I'm, i think it's like dead um yeah it was just funny man like it just was the natural progression you know what I, mean? I felt like we were seniors back in the day and then we graduated you know what i mean and it'd be weird to go back to your high school and just like walk around and be like hey what's up guys you know what i mean remember you know i used to run this i used to run this school man uh, <laughs> yeah you know, like my friend soft heart is also like still pretty involved in the soundcloud scene uh he's super underrated i mean he's been doing it for a while 
uh, but he's still like up and coming. I think he's like definitely deserves some shine, but yeah, it's, it's good to, to know that it's still thriving, like how we used to, you know, use it back in the day. So yeah, it yeah. feels good. All right. So uh, what song have you been like playing the most lately? Over the past probably like four days, I've had this bone song on repeat yeah, and we, we s- crazy. Yeah. So we spoke about it. I mean, Bones just dropped a new album and I, I really loved his last one too. I forget the name of it, but it was before this one called Burden. Mm-hmm. Um, I really liked it and I had it on repeat for like a month probably. And as soon as you, you sent it to me, you were like, yo, Bones just dropped something new, like it's fire. I just went went to it straight away and I love I love this song, Ethanol. It's just like, it's on repeat. It's like this super cool, like, arpeggiated like piano it feels very different because like the the uh singing on it it's a it's like so amazing and i haven't really heard him sing like with such like i don't know elegance it's like so sick it's just like such a good feeling song and i've had that that on loop like for this whole week pretty much honestly same like listening to that album a lot uh i feel like we're usually on the same page you got me yeah. listening to that UK stuff that uh you, oh, you got me yes. to Dave and uh that Guten Tag song. Yeah, uh, so good. Yeah, that that's wild. Uh and I just been, been listening to a lot of Playboy Cardi. <laughs> listen <laughs> to Jump Out the House and and uh a lot of stuff off a whole lot of red. And then I've been listening to Lionel Richie. So that's something too. Yeah, that's I'm cool. You got a you got a variety. You got like the vegetable tray of music right now. Yeah, like you the know. terrible, the terrible catering tour vegetable tray. Yeah, those I feel I'm convinced those are fake. I'm convinced those it's are not, not real. real food. It's not real oh. vegetable. You know, when you pull up to a venue, it's like we got catering, and you go in, and you're just like, you want to take the vegetable tray. Be like, oh. Honestly, I'm not gonna say what venue it was, but we've done that. We've thrown carrots uh, at walls. We've just yeah, the frustration, like bro. I don't want to bite into in the a tour. frozen carrot. <laughs> like, like I've been on ro- on the road for three weeks. Like, I need something that like makes me happy. Like, this carrot looks like it's processed, and like half of it looks like plastic. So, you know, that's the rage uh, inside of me. Good times, man. Hey, but you know what? These days in the pandemic, I'd give anything to to bite into a frozen, musty carrot uh, on tour. Yeah, oh. yeah, it's true, man. I'm definitely missing the the good times with you know the the tour squad and and stuff but yeah still grateful joe i feel like every time i i speak to someone in the industry or you know whatever it is sometimes just like a friend they they always have either heard of you or is a big fan i feel like you definitely have famous fans which would be interesting to to know yeah uh I don't know. I guess you always wonder who's listening to your music because uh, you don't know. You have no idea. Um, you know, uh, I remember when I first started out and uh, our mutual manager, Yvonne, hit me up and she was like, yo, like Pete Wentz loves your music. Uh, he wants to, you know, he wants to work. And, you know, obviously, like I signed to his label and everything. And then I remember, you know, uh, the same thing happening with, you know, hearing around the grapevine hey travis barker listen to your music he wants to do stuff and then we started you know we made an ep together and um yeah there, there's been like uh definitely weird incidents like i remember my younger cousin sent me a video of charlie d'amelio listening to hammer uh and i was like okay uh so, yeah. so i mean i don't know i don't know you never know who's listening to your music um and that's that's what always trips me out like yeah, yeah you never know and, you know, and you've like, just reached the surface of it too yeah have you had any like weird experiences with that yet or not not as much as you probably um but recently i've kind of just been every once in a while like you know how it goes like uh the label might reach out to someone uh for a feature or something and i'm like all right this person definitely doesn't know who i am like um for instance trevor daniel we wanted to get him on the album and you know we had my team reach out and and say like yo like would you be interested in hopping on this track and um he was like 
no due to his new his new deal he was like politely declined but he was like yo i love gucci though like i have this song on repeat all the time that's and dope. i was like holy shit that's really cool so it's so true you never know who's listening to you and yeah i mean hopefully i have some some famous fans out there just you know show some love maybe yeah we need like we need like Wayne, like uh dwayne the rock johnson to like you know right eat out a gucci high water song you know what i mean be like get, getting amped straight up for my workout today you know straight up straight up man my goal is like for someone famous to listen to my music it's just like someone that's jacked and like driven <laughs> that would just be the funniest thing to me because my music's so soft and like you know sad but that's why me and you we're getting jacked right now we're gonna be huge Dude. and full and we're gonna be singing really sad songs and people are gonna be really confused it's like two sides of you it's like you know like there's sadness inside of me. I'll let it out through my songs, but I'm also like fucking jacked and like <laughs> life is great. <laughs> the duality of man. All right. Well, this question went yeah. off the rails, but yeah. Yeah.